today we shall reflect on the life of saint julie billiard born on the 12th of july 1751 maria rose julie was the fifth of seven children of a devout family that owned a small business in picardy france early in life she showed a deep attachment to things spiritual and at the age of 14 took a vow of perpetual chastity two years later misfortune overtook her father his business failed miserably and julie thenceforth had to hire out and work for others radiating a contagious love of god and an eagerness to be spiritually helpful to the young around her she was permitted in the year 1770 to receive holy communion daily something unheard of in the jansenistic age then a calamitous event occurred an attempt made on her father's life so unnerved young julie that she became paralyzed with fright and remained a helpless bedridden cripple for the next 30 years but the spirit of the saint of kavili could not be broken her mystical life at home and her intimate communion with god became even deeper during the six terrible years of the french revolution she was repeatedly in danger of death at the hands of the republicans and had to be moved from one place to another mass and holy communion were only possible at odd intervals whenever some hundred priests was in the neighborhood through it all julie continued to direct her works of charity from her home being particularly anxious to offset the evil doctrines of the day by providing through pious friends for the education of poor orphans and later on of girls in general finally at emins in august 1803 with the cooperation of francois blin de bourdon viscountess of gerenscourt and father joseph varin de enville the superior of the fathers of the faith Julie set her work on a permanent footing with the founding of the Institute of the Sisters of Notre Dame de Namur. The following June, the crippled Julie, then aged 53, was urged by a certain priest named Father Enfantin to make one single step for the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and found herself suddenly and completely cured of her paralysis. She could now devote all her energies during the remaining 12 years of her life to spread the institute. Some 10 convents were founded by her in France and Belgium in spite of considerable opposition and misunderstanding even on the part of the bishop of Amiens so that in the year 1809 the holy foundress thought it prudent to transfer the mother house to Namur in Belgium. Her work required frequent travel by stage coach farm cart or even on foot as on the day when she walked 28 miles to a destination her strength and courage seemed inexhaustible her zeal for souls and her ardent charity making all deprivations and sufferings appear of little significance ever confident that god would provide for the sisters elementary needs if they were doing his work She once left the sister superior of a newly founded convent no more than a single franc as working capital. The sisters of Notre Dame de Namur have since Julie's death on the 8th of April 1816 extended their beneficial work to all parts of the world and even today those pupils who can pay for their education form only a fraction of the great number who receive theirs free of charge. She was beatified in 1906 and she was canonized by Pope Paul VI in 